Folks, we again live in a world where Nebraska is ranked. We discuss it next. You are Locked On Nebraska, your daily Nebraska Cornhuskers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning and thanks for making Locked On Nebraska your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by 5-Hour Energy. Go to 5-HourEnergy.com, use the promo code LOCKEDONCFB and receive 20% off your order. All right. Hello. It is Monday morning, the Monday after Nebraska took down Colorado 28 to 10 on Saturday. We talked about that on Sunday in a reaction show. Hope you were able to check that out on YouTube and on the podcast listening platforms. On Sunday also, Nebraska released a little video cut up about two minutes long that it produced of Terrence Crawford, the champion boxer, welterweight champion light middleweight champion now out of Omaha who spoke to the Huskers on Friday night and then led Nebraska out of the tunnel before kickoff against Colorado. And in the video, Bud Crawford is seen knocking out Errol Spence last year and speaking after the fight in an interview, some other interviews that he did along with various shots of Nebraska getting ready for the game and big plays from the opener for the Nebraska. I thought um, the Huskers really took it to the next level with this integration of Terrence Crawford into the program. Um, and it got me thinking about whether Nebraska should find something more for Terrence Crawford to do, like really, truly go all in with this. And I'm, I'm kind of serious. Like if it's something that he wants to do, you know, he's 37, almost 37, Um, surely he can help them in some way like he did the past week. We know he's a huge Nebraska fan, had the 140 jersey on. I don't think that's one that's uh, ever been worn at Nebraska, 140. Yeah, no, New Jersey, custom made. That was custom made. Um, And um, like make make him a motivational asset to the Nebraska program. We can come in like every couple weeks and work with the Huskers. I don't know. Am I crazy? Like I feel like... Matt Rule wants to lean into this like, hey, we have celebrities too. He talked about that after the game. So yeah. let's find something for Bud to do more than just speak to the team once. That was funny, by the way. Uh, I like I like that move. You know, Colorado's known for their star-studded sideline. And, you know, yeah, all the, all that crap. And so uh, Nebraska's like, hey, yeah, we got, we got the, a world champion boxer, the best pound-for-pound boxer that there is in the world right now. Um, so, uh, so first... It's amazing how well they made that that fit. Like Crawford is um one of the state's biggest celebrities, obviously, and he's and it's cool, right? That that mm-hmm. helps. But also the 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 kind of message that he's sending, um, both, you know, you saw it in the video and then um in the in the pregame speech is like I'm just going to box, you know, he's going to hit some punches. He's going to do some things. Um, and like, I, I, I just have to box, right. I, I don't have to worry about any of this other stuff. And everybody else is always concerned about that. That is like exactly to a T the message that, that rule is sending. So I imagine that resonates with their players when they hear, you know, when they hear a world champion boxer come in a guy that they've watched on TV for a long time. And have said, and he said the same thing. He was like, "Look, I, I, you know, it's 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 being surgical, it's being calm, and um, it's just boxing at, at the end of the day. Like that is pretty much exactly the message that Rule is trying to send. Amazing how well that that fits. As far as um, him, like actually full time or part time, I wouldn't I'd be, say full time. <laughs> I do love the idea of him coming in more and being a representative for." Um, for the program, uh, it's, you know, he's still, he's still an active boxer, I guess. So you have to sort of like work around that, all that stuff, but he has not been afraid though. Yeah. Right. Not much longer. He, he has not been afraid to, um, you know, wear, wear red or wear blue, you know, whatever, whatever he needs to represent. If it's a big sporting event and be like the, the mascot for, for Nebraska, for, 
a day or whatever he needs to at a time. So I think that's really cool that he's willing to do that stuff. Um, and obviously, it certainly resonates with the team, but it resonates with the fan base as well. Yeah, I mean, it, people in the state love him. It's funny. I talked to some people in the press box, you know, who are in sports media, um, not necessarily from Nebraska. If you're from Nebraska, you're you're fully aware at this point of Bud Crawford. If you're not, what's going on? Yeah. But again, boxing is so out of the mainstream at this point that unless maybe you're some kind of a transcendent heavyweight, like people didn't, there were people there who didn't know who he was. Like, who's this guy that's leading them out? Oh, is he, where is, where's he from? Why is he doing this? And you know, so that, that gives me a little bit of pause, but I also feel like the people that Matt rules trying to connect with like the recruits perhaps, and let's, let's, let's talk about what this is. Like, why do they have Will Compton as their hype yeah. man on the scoreboard? before every game why is he on the sidelines why is he in the locker room like taking video and talking to recruits and posting it on social media because the people that nebraska wants to appeal to to make its program better aka recruits like they know will compton they know taylor lewan they know bud crawford when Deion sanders did his lap around the field he almost ran me over by the way i, I got out to the field right at the right before um, at the at early, you know, it's an hour and a half before kickoff when I first walked out there and I was standing there like on the, the apron behind the end zone or actually not the apron, the, the turf. And here comes Dion. just, just, uh, he's, you know, if you're in his way, um, you better move. And, yeah. and, uh, I, I was, it, it was okay. It wasn't a big deal, but he, he stopped and went back and had to have some words like he hug, hugged it out with yeah. Crawford because people in the sporting world who are deeply into it, the kinds of people that Matt rule is trying to reach, they know, Bud Crawford, they Just know, Will the fact, like th there's, there's nothing cooler. There's nothing more badass than being the best boxer. Like mm -hmm. that, you know, it's even it's today like, where boxing is kind of <laughs> like in the shadows. So it, all you have to do is give a quick lesson to the person who doesn't know he is like, Oh yeah, he's a world heavyweight champion boxer. It's like, oh, okay. Um, that guy's awesome. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't it yeah. doesn't take long to figure that out. So absolutely it 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 resonates with recruits and um, you know, people inside the program and people who are watching it. So it's it's really cool for Nebraska to have that guy. And look, I mean, this is thinking outside the box. And and I don't really I look, I know Nebraska's there, he's not gonna be on retainer. Um, but look at what Compton's doing. Like he, he basically works for him at this point. Yeah. Like I the hit video like every week now. Yeah, I guess they're going to do this every game. Like, I can't wait to see what his hype video is like for Northern Iowa. You know, like <laughs> the FCS, they got nothing. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's more know. of a, maybe it's more of like a an inward looking message rather than an outward facing message. It's like we got to worry about us this week. I imagine that'll be something like that. Sure, and I wouldn't expect Bud to be there this week for. The, no. the Northern Iowa game, but like you get Wisconsin in town, like bring him in a couple times a season, bring him in and, and, you know, do something in the off season with him. Um, he does love Creighton, um, but that doesn't conflict with Nebraska football. Um, it, it's, uh, it's not the, you know, the, yeah, right. So like he can, he can, he can do both. He can be the, he already is the state's most prominent Jasker and that, that kind of stuff can continue. I, I think Matt rule wants to keep thinking outside the box with the way that he promotes Nebraska football. Like he's, he's on, he's on the cutting edge of something now I'd say after the past week, the week is this last week has taken it to a new level or like a step up to the next level as far as making Nebraska football, the brand cool and beating Deion Sanders and Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter is yeah. a, is a step there. So, um, you know, you, you got unlimited staff size. You can, you got, you, you got <laughs> make him the assistant to the assistant uh, linebackers coach. Uh, but no, I, I, I will see. I want to see where this goes, like where Nebraska goes, where Matt rule goes with his efforts to continue to try to make Nebraska the cool program, um, the new cool program on the block reinventing in Nebraska. Yeah. Rules rules kind of, um, I don't think he said stuff like this before. I'll be whoever I need to be, you know, and, and he's been in a lot of different places around the, you know, he's, he's a New York city guy. He, um, you know, text the state of Texas came to love him. Mm -hmm. Now the yeah. state of Nebraska has come to love him. Uh, on Saturday, he was 
wearing um he he got he got posted on oh, a shoes on a shoes account yeah on a on a cool what was shoe he wearing account. uh oh, mitch see <laughs> you know this is hey this you're the young one here he sends yeah well <laughs> young younger i guess okay. um i don't know i don't i don't know but he was on the they shoes account, and that's important and um and you know you look at the comments and it's like wow okay you know he's got some game what's what's going on here um, it so it does. It matters to kids. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be what he needs to be, I think, in, in order for Nebraska to, to be relevant nationally. Okay. So Bud Crawford is going to be on staff. Matt Rule's wearing all the cool shoes. Will Compton's the official hype man of Nebraska football. Here we go. These are, this is 2024. So, all right, we're going to come back and talk about real football stuff like Nebraska being in the national rankings and in the playoff conversation. How about that? I didn't expect that after week two, but this is where we are. College football is an overreacting, overreactive sports so um that's coming up next want to let you know to please continue to like and subscribe the show on you sub subscribe to the show on youtube um like us subscribe to us leave a comment do all the stuff you need to do on the podcast listening platforms reach out to us on email at locked on neb at gmail.com reach out to us on twitter we'll have questions for a mailbag later in the week and as often as needed coming up we get more into football talk. All right, it's Tapper. I want to tell you a little bit about five hour energy. I feel like I need some five hour energy today. Five hour energy. Welcome to the show as a sponsor of the pod. Uh, if you need to tackle a to do list or a DIY project at home, or just need to uh, stay alive at work, try five hour energy and check everything off your list. If you're like me, the list can get long. When the when you head out to get supplies, don't forget to pick up some five-hour energy. With zero sugar and a convenient portable size, it's the perfect pick-me-up for getting stuff done. Five-hour five hour energy. Its website has flavors galore like watermelon, tropical burst, grape berry, and more. There's a flavor for everybody. Try them all. I'm a little picky with that. Tropical burst sounds pretty good. On the site, you have the option to build your own 12-pack or 24-pack, choose the flavors, and it will be delivered right to your door. Go to 5hourenergy.com, the number 5hourenergy.com, and get some 5-hour energy today. Use the promo code LOCKEDONCFB to receive 20% off your order. That's LOCKEDONCFB. Offer valid until September 30th on one order. Cannot be used with other promotions. Not get on subscription orders. Head to 5hourenergy.com. All right, welcome back. Uh, Connor Happer here, Mitch Sherman of the Athletic Connor Happer, 1620 The Zone. Uh, Nebraska's 2-0. and um, We wondered at the end of the week last week, will the winner of the Colorado-Nebraska game be ranked on Monday? Um, and it turns out that that was indeed, or maybe I wondered that on my show. Either way. Um, we talked about it on the reaction show, yeah. There you go. Um, and they are. Nebraska is number 23 in the AP poll. They're in the AP poll for the first time in Five seasons since uh, the week before heading to Colorado in 2019, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, number 24 in the coaches poll. Um, so that is um, a pretty monumental, you know, I don't know if it's monumental, but it, it it definitely feels good. Nebraska's in the spotlight a little bit. They had a big national game and they kicked, but, you know, they've, they've fallen flat on their face a lot in those games. And then... Um, everybody redoes their college football playoff brackets on Sunday, Monday. And they're like, all right, who's, who's hot right now. Who's looking like they could be, whose stock is up. Um, your colleague, Stuart Mandel at the athletic Mitch, uh, put Nebraska in at the 11 seed in the college football playoff. The last at large that? team to get in. I saw another one that had Nebraska as one of the first four teams to miss the college football playoff. Um, so, how about that? Uh, by the way, uh, it would be Nebraska and Alabama and Tuscaloosa in the first round of that playoff game. So I, I'd say, I'd say, get your flights ready or pack up the cards right now because this is all happening for sure. Stu's going to get called now by like fourteen radio shows in the state of Nebraska <laughs> this week to uh, to come on and talk about. There's absolutely that's that's the least. Um, so will be the least surprising development of uh, of this week in sports media. Yeah, this is a new phenomenon in sports media with the uh, the twelve team playoff. It wasn't really all that interesting to do this with a four team playoff in week two. Like, what did you know, and how how much how much 
uh, conversation could you really generate by going, I think I'll take Georgia and Texas and (laughs) Ohio State looks good. Okay, who's the fourth spot? No, it's totally different now. It's like bracketology um, that we have all through the college basketball season. I think they even do it in the off season. Like let's fill out the oh, yeah. 14 bracket before. Lunardi just put out before. a bracket like last week, I think. Yeah, of course. Of course he did. And I'll, it'll change. It'll change like in a, in a month based on, um, I don't know, a preseason injury or something, something like that. But now we can do this in college football. Like we we've been missing all these years being able to do this and you can have a week two bracket and uh, it's like, okay, so, are you talking about how you would put the 12 teams in today based off their two game resumes if the season ended now? Or are you projecting this out? And are you looking at Nebraska beating Colorado and saying, oh, OK, now I see this team going 10 and two because they looked like a 10 and two team on. I, I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to uh, text Stuart when this uh, sh- he's on West Coast time. So when you when you when you uh, when your producer reaches out to him for your show this week, Connor, um, <laughs> let let <laughs> just nice. beware. He's in California. So it's only 6 a.m. out there uh, right okay. now as we as we record this pod. Yeah. So if I ask him to come on at 1 30, it, it'll be 11 30 his time. OK, mm-hmm. got it. Yeah. Yeah. There you um, go. So this represents, I think, big picture, like you said, um, something that I, I'm not sure is good for the sport which is the season <laughs> is now all about the college ball playoff like the right. the March Madness tournament you know it's it's become that way part in part because it always delivers like it's always good now the trade off that we have left is that um not all the games matter anymore you know if you're if you're Georgia and you're at the top of the rankings you can probably lose twice and be just fine you know and 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 find your way into the playoffs so that's that's a little different. That's an adjustment in the sport, but no doubt about it, we've gone you know full all the way into the playoff. It is worrisome because the thing you have in college basketball is the conference tournaments, where really even if you're three and twenty-seven, you're not officially out until you've lost in the conference tournament because of the automatic bids, and and that just doesn't exist in college football. Like Florida State at zero and two in the ACC. <laughs> Probably not going to win the ACC, which no. is the only way at this point that the Knolls are getting into the playoff. They're not getting in at large spot now, so they're done. They're 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 done. I guess. Pretty um, much. I mean, they lose again, they're done, and they're probably done right now because two losses in in league is not getting them in the ACC championship game. It could, I guess. So don't entirely bury them. But Nebraska in in Mandel's bracket is the last team in so they're on bubble watch uh and (laughs) uh, they get the last spot because the 12th spot is almost always going to go to the automatic g5 bid which in his in his bracket after week two is memphis uh, which plays florida state this week by the way sorry about my dog ah just started a little bit but um you know as far as nebraska is concerned what what a what a time. And this is kind of what we thought we would, would happen. Nebraska got a nationally televised game that people are, I, I can't wait to see the TV numbers. I haven't seen them yet. Um, I imagine we'll get those today or, or tomorrow. Um, yeah. You know, there's going to be more than, you know, five, 6 million people who watched that game. And it was an absolute bludgeoning for Nebraska. I mean, <laughs> you know, and, and maybe the takeaway nationally is, Oh, what's wrong with what's wrong with coach prime. What's wrong with Colorado. Is this really working? But in the back of their heads, if you really if you really care about college football and you care about how the season plays out, you're looking at Nebraska and you're saying, "Man, that's that's a heck of a defense." Um, and yeah. and they got a quarterback, so um, I, I think that's a, a an awesome. It, it took them two weeks to really get relevant again, <laughs> I, and I think there is part of the the national um, college football fan base or uh, maybe the national media too who. Who welcomes this sort of change? Who who welcomes Nebraska back with open arms and says, "Man, this is this is cool." It kind of feels like you know, enter time period here again. If Miami's good, if Tennessee's good, if you know, Florida State's good, it's like, wow, this is this is the throwback. This is amazing. It feels like it's the '90s again. Um, and and I feel like there's there's some of that from the national media as well. You got Miami with Cam Ward. Tennessee with Nico Yamaleva, Nebraska with Dylan Raiola. Like, if you have a quarterback who moves the meter and a name as your program, that is 
two checks in the box to get the national media, the national college football fans, like 100% in your corner. Like they have things to latch on to Nebraska. If it continues to stretch and, and that very much remains to be seen there. I think that Nebraska has a more difficult game than it faced against Colorado coming in next Friday night to Memorial stadium when Illinois in the big 10 opener visits, but we'll talk about that over the next 10 days. Um, if Nebraska can continue this, you're only going to see that train move down the tracks and people are going to be all in on Nebraska um, and what Nebraska being, quote, back could yeah. mean for the sport. Um, one little thing before we get to our second break and then talk about Tony White's defense in the third segment, for people who are just waking up on this Monday morning and going, oh, there's a 12-team college football playoff. Like maybe you're a Nebraska fan and you're focused on Nebraska entirely. You know there's a 12-team playoff, but you're not entirely sure how it works. In the version that Stuart Mandel projected, Nebraska as the 11 seed is getting to go on the road in the first round and play at one of the home sites. And, and Connor, you mentioned this. They're going to Alabama in, <laughs> in Stu's projection. And Welcome back. Right. If you are in that eight through 12, I'm sorry, nine through 12 range, uh, including the G5 champ, you're going to go play at the home site of the five through eight teams, one through four, which are the power four champs. They have first round buys and Alabama certainly could be a team. I would think will be a team that's in that five through eight range because Georgia and Texas look really good. And I think one of those teams is going to win the SEC. Uh, so what would that be like? What would, what would it be like for Nebraska to pack up, take the, take the big 18 wheeler and, and head on down to Tuscaloosa in December, right before you know Christmas. Funny? We spent, we've spent all this time now, almost a decade lamenting how Nebraska hasn't had a cool bowl trip. And then their, their bowl trip would be to Tuscaloosa <laughs> for a home game for Kalen DeBoer. Uh, Where they're completely outnumbered and there's no oh fun God. to be had whatsoever. You oh, know? And they would, and they would get smoked. Like, let's just say it. Like, I, well, they got problems. <laughs> you know, they they were they were in a game with South Florida mm -hmm. Saturday for a long, long yeah. That they time. ended up winning by four touchdowns. But you yeah. know, it was a game for a while. Yeah. yeah. So um, that would not be. I don't think that would be like the dream. Bullet. Like people are like, man, can we just go to Florida? Go to the Outback Bowl, please. You know, and they're like, no, nope, you're going to Tuscaloosa to get wrecked by Alabama. Alabama has five stars who open the doors so that the players can run out the locker room of the locker room to go onto the field. Like I, <laughs> Nebraska's not ready for that. They're not ready for that smoke. But you know, if they could get the opportunity to do it, everybody would just absolutely be uh, uh, going crazy. So, yeah, uh, we'll All see. Right. There's a long there's a long way to go before we get to that. We'll be back. Let's talk about Nebraska's defense. Uh, Mitch and I both supplied the world with some stats yesterday, so uh, yes. we'll be back after this. All right, I want to tell you about Ibotta, a new sponsor to our show. That's Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A. It is a free app that lets you earn cash back every time you shop. You can earn on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year in cash back. Just money that you get for using the app. So other apps, you'll get points that don't amount to all that much. With Ibotta, you get cash that you can move right into your PayPal account or your bank account, or you can take it as a gift card. You just simply add offers within the app, upload your receipt, and boom, the money is there. On over 2,400 brands, that's what you can use. That's what you can, where you can go with Ibotta. Shop it. More than 1,000 retailers, including your favorite grocery stores, places like Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just to try it out. Use the code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE when you register. Go to the App Store or the Google Play Store. Download the free Ibotta app. Start earning cash today. That's Ibotta in the Google Play or App Store with the code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. Okay. Back for the final segment on this Monday, Mitch Sherman of The Athletic here with Connor Happer of 1620 The Zone. Some stats about the Nebraska defense that Connor shared 
on social media Sunday. The Huskers have allowed 17 points, including the extra points kicked by opposing teams, while the D itself has scored nine, a safety and a touchdown that Nebraska mm-hmm. has has um, delivered in two games. So four turnovers forced a blocked field goal by defensive lineman Ty Robinson, and the Huskers have allowed seven third downs to be converted on 24 attempts. Um, also, no fewer than low 60s, uh, about 111, 112 snaps um, that this defense has faced in two games. So those are some those are some uh, some heady numbers, Connor. That that you uh, that you in part dug up. Yep. So this is um, this is a part of my drive chart that I put together every year. I do it for the offense and the defense, and it tracks just various things about what it looks like on average, and really what you're trying to find out is if they play complementary football. It's hard to not play complementary football when the defense is this good, uh, although Nebraska did kind of accomplish that last year. So um, the defense, (laughs) another one that I pulled out that I didn't tweet out with that yesterday, uh, just about 30% of Nebraska's drives that they face end in three and outs at this point. And that does not count the four and outs. I believe Colorado had two of them on Saturday night, at least one of them um, on Saturday night. Uh, so seven out of the 24 drives uh, that Nebraska's faced this year have been just three plays and a punt. Um, 11 of them had, have ended in a punt in general. Um, only two touchdowns against Nebraska. Um, it's looking really, really sharp right now. And then they've they've blocked a field goal, and then Colorado, for some reason, tried to kick a 150-yard field goal that that ended up missing. So um, it's <laughs> Why didn't Nebraska put a, put a guy back on that? I, I don't know. They, they probably should have. Um, but <laughs> oh, Nebraska, guard against the fake, maybe. I don't know. Nebraska is facing um, their defense is facing just under five plays a drive at this point. There nobody nobody's extending drives on them. Um, it's early. It's small sample size, but man, it's really impressive. I wonder. I, I wonder if our um, our friend Max Olson is going to continue doing his stop rate, which is one of my favorite yep. metrics. Um, I, I'm about, sure it'd be about 90% right now. I did that match sure. yesterday. Okay. That's yeah. That's a high number. I, I'm yeah. sure he will. He's taking his talents to ESPN left, left us high and dry here at the athletic. Um, but we're, mm. we're fine. Um, so providing great college football coverage, uh, every day, get it at the athletic site and app. Uh, <laughs> he does the stop rate. That's, that's Max's thing. And, uh, it, it, I don't know if he'll start maybe after week two. We'll see. I'll, so I'll, uh, I believe- I'll find out. I asked him this last year because I was doing this math sort of myself. They, they've allowed, they've only allowed three drives in which points have scored on them, right? Two touchdowns mm-hmm. and, a, and a field goal. Um, so that's, a, it, it's three out of 24. So it's the inverse of 12.5. It's like 87 and a half percent right now is their stop rate. It's, it's okay. very, very good. They also yeah. did not blitz in the season opener against UTEP and then uh, blitzed about 12% of the time against Colorado. So in, through two games, according to Pro Football Focus, Nebraska has a Big Ten low 7.6 blitz rate wow. um, and eight sacks, which is behind only Kurt Signetti in Indiana among the 18-team Big Ten. The Hoosiers, I think they won 77-3 to this week right. um, against the high school team. So they have 10, they have 10 sacks. And Nebraska has eight. So if you can blitz fewer than just about everybody and and get a high sack rate, then that is that is also uh, a feather in your cap. Nebraska ranks fifth nationally in rushing defense in yards allowed per game, and then sixth in yards allowed per rushing attempt at one point five seven per carry. A number that we'll see. Um, we'll see what Northern Iowa does, but it would would seem to uh, be able to be able to stand yeah. up and 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 live to uh to rank high again here next week going into big 10 play you could never tell exactly just while watching a game um i went back and watched the first quarter last night though just because i wanted to see the tv yeah. copy of it um good you, you can't um you, you can't tell while watching it but the blitz thing is something that i picked up on um after immediately after the game and i thought gosh i don't really think they were just sending heat from all over the place it wasn't like they were leaving their corners high and dry nebraska's nebraska's Defensive backfield did a really good job. I mean, that those the first two drives in particular, it was just Nash, Hutmaker, and Ty Robinson just destroying everything in front of them. I mean, mm-hmm. you you had 
Colorado lineman turned around looking at Shador Sanders on the ground. And, you know, they couldn't do anything but help him up. They, they had nowhere to go. Robinson this year is um, playing at another level. Um, you can see that through two games. And nothing against Nash. He's fine. And, and he's getting held. And it's not being called. But uh, he, <laughs> Ty Robinson is, is on a mission to get himself to the NFL. I think both of those guys are. And I think Jamari Butler is going to play in the NFL too. So that's three players up front. Um, somebody asked me in in the in the national media on Saturday night where Nebraska's defensive line should rank national. Like, are they good? Was kind of the question. Like, they're eating Colorado alive. Is this is this really a good defensive line? And I said, yeah. I mean, it's top half of the Big Ten. And is it better? Like, I mean, is this is this top ten nationally defensive line? Uh, I don't. It's it's pretty good. I I might tell you that. I mean, yeah. they have their they have their best defensive. I mean, the Nebraska's had some okay ones, I guess, in the post Sioux era. You know, sure. you, you, they, they've had some okay ones. Lee Collins, Vincent Valentine, that group. You know, Randy Gregory played post Sioux. Um, yeah, uh, the 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 Dave the Davis twins. You know, they, yes. those guys yes. were okay. Darian Daniels had a nice season. Right, and Damian and, Daniels. Yeah, yeah. This is, I mean, whether it's scheme or whatever it is, um, it's producing. You know, and I guess it's good that's players. That's the yeah. rub with them. Like, do, are they are they first round talents? Like, no. But are they are they getting great production? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't know what you do with that information. Yeah. If Ty Robinson wasn't like twenty three years old, um, you know, which is a factor when you're going into the draft. Uh, I'm not saying first round, but and we'll see. You know, he might be a he might be a day two guy in the in the NFL draft. I think that can really happen. Um, final thought. So. As I was watching the first game and the first half and thought back about the first half, you know, it's 28 to nothing. So you think like, oh, Nebraska is just like playing over its head, especially because of the way the second half went. Like, is that the real Nebraska or is the first half the real Nebraska? The conclusion that I come to is that other than maybe like one or two plays in that first half, and this is involving the defense and the offense, I didn't really feel like Nebraska was doing things in the first half of that game that are like out of their reach to be able to repeat. I mean, yes, the Agreed. momentum and things started to snowball in a certain direction and Colorado was on its heels and, and was affected by the pressure all around it. But Nebraska can play that way. Like that is Nebraska at its, you know, at or I don't even know if it's at its best. Like there's way better things that Nebraska can do offensively. So I think as the season goes on, you're going to see more stretches like that in games. That was a 30 minute stretch. And I, I wouldn't say that, that like it's, it's unattainable. Like this team, this team can do that again. Punt turnover on downs, interception, punt, punt, missed field goal, punt, missed field goal. Uh, I believe that was the entire first half for, for Colorado. I mean, a black explosive from, offense. Yeah. <laughs> so and it was 28 nothing. No, I agree. I, I I didn't think it was like this, you know, outstanding this this crazy outlier performance. It, it, I think that's just what you can expect from this group. They're really really good. Yeah. All right, that's it for the show on this Monday. We'll be back on Tuesday to digest what Matt Rule has to say as the Huskers start to turn the page and move into Northern Iowa week. They are fully um embracing that and Lincoln as we speak, we'll hear from Matt Rule around noon on Monday. Check back with us Tuesday on reaction from that, uh, and we'll see where the week is headed. Thank you for making Locked On Nebraska your first listen today. Now go check out the Locked On College Football Podcast. Spencer McLaughlin got you covered, getting you ready for an exciting conference season. We're getting through the non-conference portion of the season. You can find the link to Locked On College Football in the description of this show, so there is no need to search. It is part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day.